Hey guys, Jim Hoffman here for EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. Today, let's talk about uh, 12 lead ECG guys and D2BT. What the hell is that, right? Well, D2BT, PCI, STEMI, you start thinking all these little additional sort of, uh, um, you know, mnemonics you have to sort of remember, but think about D2B is the, that's the door to balloon time, okay? When the patient that might be having that MI gets to the hospital and how long it takes them to get uh, that treatment, okay? Get the catheterization, get to the cath lab. Now, the STEMI, the, the ST elevation myocardial infarction is what we're looking for when we're checking our 12 lead and then alerting the hospital that we're coming in with a patient having a heart attack, having an MI, right? Um, and the PCI is the per percutaneous coronary intervention, and that's the balloon, the catheterization, and all that good stuff. Also, you might see that rec recognized as PPCI, and the first P just stands for primary. But today, guys, I don't want to get into what the hospital's doing and, and, and bore you with statistics and things like that. But what I do want to mention is that there is a little bit of a goal going on, okay? And they're trying to have the goal to get the patient um, to the cath lab uh, in 90 minutes. Now, of course, that really does need to be less, and a lot of systems out there are working to get this goal uh, door to get the goal to the patient getting to the cath lab a lot less than 90 minutes. And there's stuff out there. People have been getting to the cath lab in 30 minutes. They've been getting to, to it in even less than that. I've seen, I saw one, it was something like nine minutes and, and somewhat seconds, right? But the goal is 90 minutes. And while it's recognized that it needs to be less, part of us as EMS is to make it less, it goes by our contact, our contact with the patient, our contact with the emergency room, our treatment that we're giving them. And I think, you know, when it comes to pre-hospital care and STEMIs and patients having heart attacks, this is where EMS can really, really play a vital role. And while no EMS system is perfect, we don't have our times down as much as we'd like, um, there is a significant um, uh, um, intervention we can do and significant improvements and and how outcomes of the patient uh can be positive okay and we can play a role in that and so to me I, that's what i want to try to talk about a little bit during this monday minutes and talk a little bit what us as ems providers as paramedics can do uh for the patient okay to help lessen this uh door to balloon time and lessen this 90 minute window right so the first thing, guys, do the EKG on scene. Do the 12 lead on scene with your patients that you're suspecting are having an MI, okay, the chest pain patients, okay? A lot of times I see a lot of paramedics not bringing their 12 leads into calls because, you know, the chest pain call ends up being this sort of cry wolf almost type call that a lot of people will mention when they're talking to the dispatcher, okay, the call taker when they're you know, given their 911 uh, complaint, right? So this becomes sort of numbs the providers. So unless as a provider you're getting a lot of details about what's going on with the patient, sometimes you take that shortcut, you don't bring the monitor inside the house. Listen, carry it inside, guys. I know it's not a light piece of equipment. Bring it into the house. You get your chest pain patient, put them on the monitor, do your 12 lead. A lot of times your three lead might even show you that there could be some elevation going on just with your three lead alone. So do your 12 lead on scene, okay? This is gonna help lessen that window and help you begin your treatment. Because if you get on scene, you do your 12 lead, you see your, your STEMI going on there, what are you gonna wanna do? Transmit that EKG, transmit that 12 lead to the emergency room as soon as possible. And this way that they can go ahead and look 12 lead, they, they can consult with each other, the cardiologist, all that good stuff and start getting the coronary team in place and activated. You know, they're not standing around waiting for you, right? It's going to maybe take them 20, 30 minutes to get everybody, you know, in the emergency room, at the cath lab, all that great stuff. So, but you transmit that 12 lead, it's keeps, it, it keeps the patient care going. It's going to keep the, um, their uh, diagnostics going on, and it's going to allow them to be ready when you get there. In the meantime, what are you going to do? 
when you're done transmitting, you can do your treatment, right? The aspirin, the nitro, the IV, maybe morphine, okay? All these things you're going to start doing for your patient, of course, depending upon your protocols and whatever it is that, that you do, okay? And you're going to do your treatment, and you're going to document, and you're going to let them know when you get there. But in the meantime, you've already transmitted your 12 lead, you've done your, your EKG on scene, and you're on your way to the hospital. And now you got to do a transport decision, guys. And this is the thing. A lot of different areas in EMS were not really around the corner from these PCI, these percutaneous coronary interventional centers, right? So we have to make that decision. And by doing it on scene, doing your 12 lead on scene, transmitting that 12 lead, maybe consulting with the doc, you're going to be able to make that decision of where you're going to be taking the patient. Sometimes the patient's family's favorite hospital or where their primary doctor is isn't necessarily that PCI center, and the patient's not going to get the best care when it comes to the STEMI event that's going on. So make that transport decision, inform the family what's going on, okay? You might have to do things like even fly a patient, okay, depending upon the distance of a PCI center. And all this is going to go and, you know, involved with your protocols and, and what you do when you consult with the, the doc when they get the 12-lead ECG. And of course, you're consulting with the doc, because those are going to hinge upon what treatment you're giving, right? Also, guys, on the way to the hospital, reassess the patient, your blood pressures, the patient's complaints, all that great stuff, and repeat the 12 lead. Even Oftentimes, I might, I might repeat a 12 lead two, three times on the way to a hospital, depending upon the transport time, depending upon what's going on with the patient, what their complaints are, okay? Repeat that 12 lead, guys. There are times you might even find yourself repeating a 12 lead and a STEMI might be gone because you've treated them, okay? So repeat that 12 lead, and if any significant changes going on, retransmit it to the hospital before you get there, okay? Let them know what's going on. Keep them abreast of what's happening. So, guys, may remember, bring that monitor inside. Do the 12 lead in on the house, transmit as, pos as soon as possible, and begin your treatment. And don't forget, guys, transport to the appropriate facility uh, in your area and keep the family informed. You don't want them going to their favorite hospital thinking that's where you're going to be headed. If you're going to be going to a hospital, it might be a little bit further away, but the patient's going to get a more long-term treatment as far as uh, p being a PCI center. Okay, guys? Um, so that's my quick uh, Monday Minutes for today. Uh, again, I just encourage you to do stuff on scene. It's actually been shown that EMS and paramedic uh, uh, systems that do these EKGs on scene and start the treatment in the house before they start moving to the hospital, all that good stuff, it shows that there really isn't that much of a difference when it comes to the entire transport time of the patient getting to the hospital. Okay, so you're doing the patient a great service by getting that done on scene and getting the ball rolling because overall, you're not really taking that much longer to get to the hospital with the patient, okay? Guys, if you want some uh, pretty cool giveaway here over at uh, the main website, emsseo.com, there's an exclusive giveaways tab uh, in the menu there, and you can get a free uh, pocket card on ST segment elevation. So uh, if you're interested in that, go to emsseo.com. Check that out and fill out the form there, and you'll be sent a free pocket card on ST segment elevation. Okay, um, guys, I hope you can use these Monday minutes. Uh, and if I'm gonna have two links in the main blog uh, as well on this video at emsofficehours.com, uh, some two links there on some pretty great 12 lead training uh, book and uh, 12 lead app that you can get on iTunes, uh, and also actually a web based app as well to help you. Uh, train, study, and understand 12 leads. So go to emsofficehours.com, go to the Monday Minutes, and you'll see this video there, and you can check out those other links to some other great 12 lead ECG resources. So be sure to leave me the comments below, guys. Uh, tweet this out, Facebook like it, Facebook share it, spread the love, and I'll see you next week uh, on Monday Minutes. Until then, guys, as always, stay safe. <laughs>